All right, number nine, if you ever knew just how big a condor was, this, uh, well, maybe you don't. No, this I never This will give you an idea. Oh, it yeah. Released back into the wild. What the? Get the yeah, size of that lot. thing. These are the, considered to be the largest birds of prey in the world. They can weigh about 30 pounds, a wingspan of 10 feet. They had it in that little carrier? Mm. Looks more than 30 pounds. Sure does. Yeah, it's a lot of feathers. Wow. But it jammed <laughs> in that little dog Sure, crate. carrier. Yeah, let's, let's see, see if it, can this thing yeah. fly or what? It takes a while. Uh, she wanders it. around a lot. Are these the ones that come and hover around, you know, uh, dead Roscoe animals? Vulture. That's a vulture. Yeah. Oh, that's a vulture. Yeah. Yeah. What's a Same condor family. known for? Ooh, I don't know. Bad timing. For like boring we us. had his moment. We had him set up. <laughs> now you hey, know. Five, like five seconds late. Well, we don't know if he. Yeah. Yeah, yeah can't go in the end of it. Oh, there he goes. Oh, that could be a different condor. We yeah. don't know. Yeah. Well, look at that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, number eight in South Carolina, a man wrestled the coyote to save his dog. Timothy Snipe was taking his dog Roxy for a walk when. Uh, she started heading toward the woods. Yeah. Soon enough, she was getting attacked by a coyote, but Snipe yes. jumped into action. Look at that. He wasn't about oh to let his dog get injured, or even worse, so he grabbed the coyote, and he was able to trap the animal in a box. <laughs> that's no until, box. Until it's a dumpster, right? Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah. Until, I, can't, I can't look at the no, video yeah, and read yeah. it at the same time. And he did it in a robe. That's yeah, the, that's the, that's the best part. A lot of people can do that in sweatpants, but this guy's yeah. in a terry cloth robe. In slippers. So he's. That would have been all right, even if I had got bit and got rabies or something. I know I could get treated for him, but if she had got bit, it was over. Huh. Uh, it's a man who loves his was dog. bit by the coyote, but he's recovering following a series of rabies shots. And from now on, Roxy will be wearing her coyote vest with protective spikes. I'd like to see the video of how they get the dog uh, out. Whenever she is outside. There you go. There's the coyote vest. Of course, they can get the dog by the leg, but. Yeah. I'm just astounded that there was this dumpster that was the perfect size sitting yeah. right in the middle of the yeah. the yard. What That's a nice... A relatively heavy animal, I right? Know. And one handing mm -hmm. and yeah. getting the lid open. God, yeah. that was, go. that's a hero that's right amazing. there. That's Good yeah. stuff. All right. All righty. Number seven, Larry? Number seven. Have you ever heard of the Streisand effect? Oh, Lord. People. It's named for <laughs> this woman. Barbara Streisand. It's basically the uh, unintended consequence of trying to hide something or keep it out of the public eye, but instead of hiding it, you end up making people much more aware of the thing. Back in 2003, she wanted to keep this aerial photograph of her home in Malibu from public view. The California Coastal Records Project had taken photos of cliffside homes in order to document coastal erosion. In 2003, Barbara sued the photographer and Pictopia.com, 50 million for violation of privacy. The lawsuit demanded removal of image 3850, sure. which was publicly available on the Coastal Erosion website. The thing is, the photo had only been downloaded six times before the suit. The month after the lawsuit, more than 400,000 people visited the site. <laughs> oh, man. That's what she deserves. Oh. Streisand lost and had to pay the photographer's legal fees. Boy, that looks perilously close to the edge there, yeah, doesn't she it? Go take a look. A lot of us rooting for gravity on yeah. that one. <laughs> Stop it now. <laughs> You're not wrong. All right, number six. Uh, maybe 30 below isn't that bad. You could be in Canada. The top 10 coldest places on Earth right now are all in Canada. This is according to a new report from Weather Now, which tracks the coldest temperatures on Earth. The coldest temperature on the planet as of January 12th was Watson Lake, Yukon. Watson Lake was 48 degrees below, and that was before the wind chill. The wind chill took it to 57 below. Other parts of the Yukon measured just below that with 47 below. Again, that was before the wind chill, so we've got something to be thankful here. It could be worse in theory. Well, there you go. All right, number five coming up. We're talking to an expert about navigating the job market. Here's a tip we came across online. Don't include the year you graduated from college on your resume. 
Here's why. More traditional workplaces are going to base your salary on how long you've been in the real world. Recent graduates may think their graduation date helps them, but lots of recruiters say it's best just to be judged on your skills and previous experience. So you may be considered for more than an entry level role. We'll ask the expert about that coming up. What expert are we asking about that? An expert. An expert. Oh. Here's another tip uh, based off uh, an intern we had about 20 years ago. Yeah. Your email should not, on a resume, should not be like Jeff. No, it was, it was baseball stud at like, <laughs> yeah. AOL.com yeah. or something like that. Yeah. 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 Mine was tiny hot pants for. Yeah. Uh, uh, he forgot uh, the 69 on there, too, that you put in there. Yeah. Number four. Yeah. Yeah. As we get going on the it year works. 2024, we don't want to cause any unnecessary worry. <laughs> <laughs> but this headline from the Independent is really <laughs> causing so stupid. It's not even funny. I He's know. just laughing. I'm laughing. Not laughing. <laughs> Climate <laughs> crisis could kill off. <laughs> what? What? What is going on? Uh, I'm not being uh, it either. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, if this is not a call to action yeah. for climate, I don't yeah. know what is. Uh, yeah, you can get a lot fence. of men behind, yeah. it, behind the effort <laughs> if they only knew. <laughs> wow. Mm. Boy, uh, that should have been the lead. <laughs> oh, jeez. What are the odds a uh, producer's going to get fired after that? No, uh, no, it's science. It's science. There it is. Stop there. It is. That is an actual it's headline. It's from the Independent. And it's Nonetheless. science. Uh, I, it is science. It's a bird, Larry. What's wrong with you? <laughs> He's always in the gutter. Yeah. Yeah. Always in the gutter. I am all for science. I'm just ah. saying that there are some people around here who, yeah, who don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> you're telling There's me. There's a number of them. Mm. <laughs> but they were all right with tiny hot pants stuck. Yeah, 69. <laughs> <laughs> number three, fried sandwiches. They're the next big trend in Tokyo right now, and we know what you're thinking. Fried sandwiches, that's common. Uh, fried chicken, you know, what's the big deal? Well, these aren't your traditional fried sandwiches. They have a whipped cream fried mm. sandwich, which is Ooh. getting a lot of attention online. Described as a sweet bed of whipped creamy goodness on top of savory, crunchy fried bread. Mm. Other favorites, the fried egg salad sandwich, uh, the fried red beans and butter sandwich, Ooh. the fried pistachio sandwich. They'll probably show up here in the States in mm. the next few months. No, Ooh. thank you. All right, number two, uh, you used to be able to send kids through the mail. Uh, this sounds like one of those urban legends, but it's true, kind of true. Uh, in 1913, the U.S. Postal Service decided to allow people to send small packages in addition to letters. It was a huge innovation because people could mail small bags of seeds to farms or things like fabric. And a few months after the parcel post started, a couple in Ohio mailed their eight-month-old eight son to his grandmother a few towns away. It only cost him 15 cents, which was much cheaper than a train ticket. Other couples started doing the same thing with their kids, and pictures would uh, make the paper because it was just so darn cute. Uh, but the kids didn't really get mailed in the traditional sense. This happened in a really small town and just a few hundred people, and people would trust the mailman to let the kid ride on the truck, and then they'd bring him oh to the relatives. Boy. It's a lot of responsibility oh, for the man. mailman. Yeah. Yeah. We should bring some of that back, I would think. <laughs> All right, number one, here's another great clip from one of our favorites, the old New York cable app access show Stairway to Stardom. Oh. This is All the King's Men. Ooh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, right now we'd like to give you a popular tune that just came out on the charts. We'd like to give you our version of the song. Oh, here we go. Wow, John Lovett from The Wedding Singer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Here we go. Oh, We've been traveling far. Pretty good. Yeah. Without a home. But not without a star. Brother on the drums, I think. Yeah. Free. <laughs> Only want to be free. I think these guys were at my uncle's Free's second wedding. <laughs> Of he is good. Yeah, but they did a lot of weddings. Yeah, look at him. Wow. He sounds like Neil Diamond. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to hear the rest of this set. What other numbers he does? Oh, 
Can you really see? He's got a great stage presence, too. Yeah, because especially it's like he's in an empty room with these two jokers and yeah. a cameraman, right? Well, what happened to him, I wonder? Hmm, probably 65 now. Oh, the days of cable access. That's a nine and nine. Nine and nine.